Have you ever felt like you were 10 years ahead in your business ventures? Today, we get to speak to a leader who made a bet years ago on technology that would help predict the future success of clinical trials. And his company was recently acquired, proving him right. I'm your host, Alex Maersperger. In season three of the Health Pulse podcast and YouTube series, we get to celebrate leaders making a difference in healthcare and life sciences. Today, we get to celebrate Bruno Boulanger, Global Head of Statistics and Data Science at Pharmalex. Welcome, Bruno. Welcome, Alex. Thank you. Please, pleasure to be here. Yeah. So you, you let's talk about this bet that you made. You uh, started a company, Arlanda, years ago that was recently acquired or acquired several years ago by Pharmalex. Can you tell us a little bit about that journey of how you came about starting it? Maybe you were always an entrepreneur or was this your first venture? Well, it was not my first venture, uh, to be honest, but this one was probably uh, the, the core of the discussion we're having today and probably a very interesting one. Indeed, I spent 20, close to 20 years, 18 years exactly, in the pharmaceutical industry after a few years at university, uh, working in different areas during my time at uh, Big Pharma. Uh, and particularly in what we call early clinical phase, meaning transitioning from preclinical to phase one, phase two, and, okay. and to use different type of techniques of modeling that we call translational science. But at that time, I was very passionate by the use and implementing Bayesian statistics to achieve this goal. And finally, I decided in, back in 2010 to say, well, why don't we make uh, a consulting company uh, proposing uh, Bayesian statistics primarily to help translational science, evaluating, simulating clinical trial and so on. So that was my idea. And at that time, I consulted a lot of friends and, and colleagues in the field and make mention about this idea. And all of them, I mean, told me that was probably a very unreasonable idea to do that because nobody or very few people will ever uh, use Bayesian statistic in clinical development. Uh, so we are back 12 years ago, uh, but I knew some company was already interested by Bayesian statistics. So based on this feedback, I decided to create my own company with the idea if nobody believe it, I probably will be alone on, the mar on this market. Maybe I will die alone on this market. That's another story. Uh, but that was the bet I made uh, at that time. And so it happened to be very successful down the road. I mean, because uh, to my big surprise, I mean, starting from one, two uh, colleagues at the beginning, uh, we rapidly end up in, in the range of 20, 25 uh, statisticians uh, after uh, six, seven years. I mean. And uh, we finally uh, got contacted by Pharmalex in 2018 uh, to join the group Pharmalex. Something maybe to mention is that uh, the, the fact that we were using and applying Bayesian statistics did open unexpected doors in front of us. And the unexpected doors was uh, being involved into what we call the CMNC statistics. I mean, the statistics for the development and process of biosy. Everything which is linked to the development of a product, the physical product. Uh, and as well, different type of uh, involvement into uh, discovery. And so that reason be the, the company becomes so large, not only because of clinical, but because we extend to the CMNC and we extend to uh, the discovery. Today, this group is probably unique, I think, because we walk from early discovery statistics down to health economics, but applying Bayesian statistics all the way through. I love how you talked about the unreasonable idea. I think as we look back in history, probably most of the best businesses started with those big bets on unreasonable ideas. So congratulations on, on your success and on the growth. You started, you talked about starting in that preclinical and early clinical phase in the clinical trial operations space with a few employees, then dozens of employees. 
And now your team, what you mentioned, has that range of consulting services, regulatory affairs, pharmacovigilance. Are you just solving bigger problems now than you originally started? Or is it sort of the same work with 10 as it is with now thousands of employees? Yeah, so the Pharmalex was originally a regulatory uh, company. And and so now we are part of a larger group, Pharmalex. And but within Pharmalex, we are uh, in statistics and data science. We are grouped close to seventy statisticians. Okay. The interest of working uh, with uh, different colleagues in different area is that it allows us to dive into more deeply into several types of problems. So the diversity of the problem we have to address is becoming broader than before. Not only in the clinical setting, because now we are addressing a more challenging situation in clinical setting, following what's happening uh, in the pharma industry, like uh, rare uh, disease development, but also uh, what we can see, and the reason I mentioned the, the CMNC side, is that uh, there are more and more challenging technologies used by the biopharma industry, like uh, we see a lot of cell therapy meaning challenge in the cell culture. Uh, for example, there is way more uh, technologies that are used uh, in, in the biopharma industry, uh, and therefore we need to understand how to integrate those uh, new technologies uh, to make decisions. And that's where the Bayesian statistics is coming into the go, because we mentioned about Bayesian statistics means also uh, evaluating probability of success, but also decision-making process. You mentioned rare diseases and rare disease drug development has certainly been in the headlines. I think that it looks like there's a real chance we have to develop precise and targeted drugs down to this individual has this condition and needs this exact drug that's going to match their unique condition. How do you predict future success in rare diseases and in the discovery and the development of drugs? And is this something where major progress has been made or is about to be made? Can you tell us a little bit more about the rare rare disease space? Yeah. So, yeah, the, the rare disease is indeed a very challenging situation where you only have few patients. Fortunately, there are few patients only having this type of disease, for example, but so it means the ability to make a classical clinical development is out of scope. There is no way you can do that. But that's the challenge. Now, this is where the Bayesian statistics is coming into the picture. Why? Why? Because in Bayesian statistics, there are, I will say, four parts. There. The first part is, is what we call the prior. And the prior is what we it is all the knowledge you have prior doing the study. That's the idea. And so what it means, particularly in the rare disease area, if there are only few patients, the other side of the aspect is that those few patients are in a way very well known and they are existing in the registry because a lot of hospitals are interconnected and they try to exchange a lot of data about how can we deal with those patients. Meaning, we have a lot of natural history information from those patients in most of the case, which is made available. So, all this historical information from past patient and current patient is available to build the prior knowledge. This is the way a patient with this disease is going to evolve in the future. That's the prior information. Now, the patient statistic will allow you to combine and to enrich the study you are doing to do with this prior of information. For example, you say, we have seen that the patient in rare disease are evolving in such a way. If after the treatment we apply, we see a change in the tra trajectory of the disease progression, that may be a sign that the treatment is, a, is effective in some way. And therefore, that the, second, the third part I will say for the Bayesian statistic, which is the posterior which is, what's the probability that the new treatment is better than the previous standard of care? Okay? That's really specific to the Bayesian statistics, as opposed to the classical statistics. 
Bayesian statistics try to figure out what's the probability of having an improvement given the data, given the prior and historical knowledge we have. And now comes into the game the fourth part. And the fourth part is, is what we call the predictive distribution. And what the predictive distribution? Predictive distribution is telling you, given the result you have observed in your clinical trial, given the historical data, what is the probability a future patient, not yet included in the clinical trial, what is the probability a future patient may benefit from this treatment, given everything you know before? And that's something which is becoming extremely critical in, in the rare disease, because you use this predictive distribution to be able to say, yes, given the limited the small data information we have, small data, and given the large data, big data we have in natural history, this is how we can predict if future patient may benefit of this new treatment. And that's really something really fundamental. Bruno, there's obviously a lot of challenges in the world, and you mentioned challenges throughout of even parsing the data and getting it. And then there's challenges in global strife, in economic conditions, and in global disease burden on both the healthcare and life sciences sides. What's something that keeps you optimistic? And what are you optimistic about in the future of health? Yeah, I'm I'm really optimistic for various reasons, and I think there are two momentum right now that may justify my, my personal optimism. The first one, I'm working now since 30 years in the pharma industry, and what I do observe uh, for the benefit of the patient is the wider diversity of treatment. I mean... Previously, it was just about small molecules, and then came large molecules, monoclonal antibody, and then vaccine, and then therapeutic vaccine, and now we have cell therapy, gene therapy, and so on. And it's increasing. There are plenty of new ideas coming on board, meaning there is an increase of the diversity of the means we can treat the patient. And I think it's very promising because we can see we, we can see from small molecule to uh, monoclonal antibodies. I mean the revolution that it happened, and then from vaccine to therapeutic vaccine as well. I mean, and each time there is new thinking and new technology and new approach coming on board. There is always uh, unmet needs that are uh, totally fulfilled. So that's really promising because the the. the the, the way uh, to tackle different type of uh, debility in this is, is really improving. So I'm optimistic on this side. The challenge, and, and also I'm optimistic also on the other side, is that there are, with all those new means, uh, new challenge, new problem that we need to solve. But in the same time, there is this numerical revolution which is happening in the pharma, just like in any other industry. Meaning, we have the ability here to collect plenty of data to understand what's happening, to, uh, to have very rich data about many aspects. Certainly exciting times. And Bruno, thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with us today. And thank you for the, the big bet that you placed in Arlanda and for the success that you've enjoyed and for the uh, benefit to us all as drugs are discovered and brought to market. So appreciate you. Yeah, thank you very much for the invitation and thank you for the very nice discussion. Yeah. And to all the listeners and viewers, we know that there's so much going on and there's infinite demands on your time. We appreciate you being here and we invite you to the comments either down here on YouTube or at our email address, thehealthpulsepodcast at sas.com. Thank you so much.